people on stage who can still to find a way out.
which is from uh, our current ongoing uh, project named Joe, which is uh, premiering at JCCC, Japanese American Cultural Community Center in downtown Little Tokyo. And we are super excited to have a JCCC director of the gallery, um, Hirokazu Kasaka, today. And um, he will give us uh, about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, um, it's up to you, but a uh, lecture talking about his works and uh, what's going on um, in California. So please stay if you can, and we have a quick transition right now. But um, thank you, Sam, Julie, <laughs> and, and we are performing this piece uh, April 30th at JCC. So let us know if you're interested in watching. It's very limited seating. We only have 30 seats per show. So thank you. Um, so we have Tom and you. Tom, Tom, Tom. And I want to thank you, Tom, as well. Um, Tom Lisser, the director for the Center of Intelligent Media, is my mentor and uh, presenting this piece as well. So he'll introduce your cousin as well. So, 
father actually gave, gave me this brush and he told me that this was made by my great grandfather. So my great grandfather had it, my grandfather had it, my father had it, and I have it. So fourth generation of caretaker of this brush. So I had it when I was a child and then went to school, graduated, became adult. And one day I was looking at this brush and I wanted to know what animal of this era was from. So when I was living in Kyoto, we have a, a, a zoo in Kyoto, and we have a friend who works there. I took it to him and asked him, who do you think this era is from? What animal? So we, all, we have a zoologist who probably knows this thing. You might have to you know, take it apart and find a deep DNA on this. So a couple of months later, I got called and said, come on, find some animal, what this animal was. I went to his office and he says, well, elephant. And I said, oh, maybe my grandfather, since a Buddhist sector, the Buddhist, Buddhism came from India, so he must have pilgrimage there. And, but this friend of mine says, hey, what's that? what do you think? This hair of the elephant is. My, I conjured up the big elephant as my instinct here is all oh, tail. He says, no, the tail will be so rough. You know, he's flapping his blood all the time, and it will be not this soft. And I'm kind of a, a chin, you know, and some hair there. And I, I made every, every corner of the animal, and I, I couldn't get. And I said, I give up. And he says, it's so soft that this is from the ear, inside the ear of the elephant. And he, he took me to the uh, zoo and he said, we are, see the hair, it's soft. We have a brush maker in town. They've been there for a thousand years. And when I go there, uh, they ask me, what? of hair the one in this And he says, what portion of the animal? And most of them, the best hair of brushwood is underpants. Mm -hmm. So all the animals of the underpants are made to beautiful brush. And also they ask what season of the hair? Winter season cold? Summer coat, spring coat, autumn coat, all that are different. And so I have to really tell them what kind of hair I would want. So even my hair is seasonal. <laughs> so. These are not hair. This uh, bird, feather, chicken, this chicken too. Peacock. These are not for painting. I'm sure you in your household you have feather duster. And that's what this is. Picking up gold dust. You pick it up gold dust and you sprinkle onto your painting. Tip of the hair. Yeah. 
air was growing in northeast stomach. And I said, what's that for? Because consumption, beginning of the life, is right here in the table. It's have never been cut with the scissors on the table. The two boys. I too have it too. Here, making the garden here, 
and three months came and started to divide the rooms with this kind of a folding screen. And within the folding screen, it had this large black shelf, was an arch. And young boy asking the monks, hey, what is that? And usually in the monastery, no one asks questions. I kept asking them, what is that, what is that? And one guy goes, shut up! <laughs> but I kept persistently asking what that is. And he says, it's a rainbow, stupid! <laughs> and my innocent voice again came, the rainbow should have a color! And that was the end of the conversation. He left me kind of stunned as well. Oh, that's a rainbow, you know? And my father came a couple months later and I went home. And 10 years, 20 years passed. When I, after the tsunami, I went back to Japan. I went back to my home. And I mentioned about this temple that we went to. I said, oh, is that head priest still living? And then my father said, yeah, yeah, you should go see him. So I went, and he was glad to see him. Oh, got big, you know. And um, I asked if I could kind of stay, stay here. In fact, I stayed here for five years. One day, when I was raking in the garden, three guys changing the same screen that I saw when I was eight years old. Remember that, but this time I didn't ask them what that was. And days went, weeks passed, and I'm kind of you know thinking, why is this rainbow screen is this time of year? And one day the head priest sitting here said, Hey, come on, let's have tea. So I sat next to him, sitting. And it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, this monastery is in the forest. And around three o'clock, the sun is beyond, behind the mountain, and the light is perfect. I'm sure the filmmakers, you know, magic power is perfect. And when I took the tea ball into my lips and reciprocated to, to drink it. And then suddenly I looked it in the rainbow, entire color was there. And the head priest kind of nodded. It's like, about time. So he explained to me in 17th century, there was a monk cut all the conical trees, conical meaning evergreen trees, these conical trees. He cut it up, planted all the Japonica mapel, maples. And so around November, end of November, in the magic hour, all these maple trees have filtered this light into the sea of lacquer, veranda, my face, and the rainbow. You don't need it. 17th century, this is, you know, talk about land art and other things. God, the monks were doing something like that. That's so cool. There is also, my, fa uh, my father and I asked, my father asked me, this Come and see this garden, Taito, August 15, 8.30 p.m. That's the title of 17th century garden. So, we were invited, and the monks let us sit on the veranda again. Here, my father's here, looking over the garden, 
you start, you know, 8 o'clock, 8.15 comes, 8.30, pitch start. You know, I'm looking at my phone, I can't see anything. And he says, just a moment, just a moment. And about 8.40 comes, you see silhouette of kind of geosecline mountain, you start to appear. And I used to ask my father, is it a town beyond this? And he said, no. And then about 8.45, boom. Full moon came up right there. It is a axial orientation of this veranda. The architect who built this veranda had a mind that moon will come, come right, right here on August 15, 8.30. So the moon came up. And traditional Japanese garden, this they call this shake, it's a bottle scenery. Isn't that cool? The garden is not here. It's beyond the garden fence. So we call it bottle scenery. We borrow it. Another one is called ikedori, which is captured and alive. So you want to capture alive. So this is alive. And the full moon starts to, you know, arise, and, it's, and I see the protuberance of stones here, like this, you know, like that, and then sea of uh, white gravel in front of us has become, you know, acute. And my father said he kind of shook his head, and I thought this was the main focus of his garden. And when he shook his head, I said, oh, there's more to it. Because I've seen some other garden using the moon. Anyway, half hour, hour came. My father had it gone already. I'm sitting there, I'm trying to figure this out. If the moon had risen a lot, and the shadow was casting something. So from with my peripheral vision, these kind of protrude uh, stones, amazingly, I just had to sit down and say, oh, damn, that's good. Because the shadow was a calligrapher creating a Chinese character for mine. This is, this is mine. You know, you could see it. And the moon was a conifer. And you see it right there. This is 17th century art, isn't it? And I grew up with this thing. You know, I don't have time, I only have 30 minutes, so next time I'll tell you about 5,000 of this stuff. It's pretty interesting. When my grandfather passed away, cremated him in a traditional way. I wanted to, to do everything traditional. Uh, today we have gas burners and electricity to cremate people. But I wanted to uh, traditionally have wood and burn it. So traditional calligraphy, the ink is made of suit, made of chalk. It's 100% chalk with a little bit glue in it. So I asked the cremation and myself to gather all the suit of my grandfather's burning. So we had, we had the uh, funnel and chimney. So after all, everything was burned, uh, myself and the cremator, crematorium people gathered all the suit for me. And made, took it to ink maker, and we made ink from my grandfather's suit. Yeah. So that, I have, I have this for about 30 years, and I'm using it slowly, but I, when I do something, I, I think about my grandfather, because he taught me so much. And when I graduated from Shinar Monastery, uh, I went back to Japan because of my visa.
knew that was up. And when I came home, uh, my parents uh, congratulated me for graduating and uh, yeah, thankful that uh, being the first son to be in America to stay and bringing American culture back to our homeland. My father gave me this piece of lacquer box. When I opened it and you see it, it's puppy seeds. It's cupcake, you know, pups, puppies. But anyway, it's puppy seed and you know, millions of them. And I asked him, what is that? And he said, it's copper. It's a Sanskrit word for eons. And I learned that from him. Let's see. He, he told me a story of what this copper is. There is, say, Three feet by seventeen mile long piece of box. Three feet by seventeen mile long box. Every one hundred years, man brings one puppy seed and puts it in there. Every hundred, that hundred year come, a man, another man comes and put it here. Until this entire box is filled to the top, we call that one cup. Another story that he told me, three feet by 17 mile long stone. Okay, so it's a big stone here. And heavenly maiden, Angel, yeah. yes. comes down from the heaven once 100 years and with her silk sleeve, she wipes it, the top of the stone and go back to heaven. And 100 years, she comes down, she swipes again and keep doing that until this stone disappeared and shaved it off. And when it's, everything's gone, we call that cup. And so my father gave me this piece of box. And since my four year as artist did nothing compared to one cup. And I realized, oh yeah, I'm just a piece of dust here to the cup. So, this, I have 50 years I've been carrying this through my life and telling stories about, uh, with my two boys. And uh, my two boys goes back to Japan once a year to go to a monastery and uh, I don't know what they do, but they, they learn something, I guess. <laughs> But anyway, the time is up right now, so next time I'll talk more about my practice and also talk about the word the child. My mother said, go play the veranda. Like, I guess from here, you know, go play outside. But we had a nice veranda. It's a go play the veranda. And I always thought it was a Japanese word. But when I went to the monastery, in my Sanskrit class, the teachers go, San veranda is a Persian word. It, it's a Sanskrit word. It is in between space, outside, inside. It's in between. Japanese call it buffer space. It's not black, 
is not light. It's infinite shades of gray. It's not yes or it's not no. Infinite maybe. And we call that black. In our English language, Japanese language, all are part of this kind of journey through Persia, through entire global language. And I hope, uh, Tom, thank you for inviting me here. And I'll come back and I'll talk about 5,000 garden again. Thanks, Yen Thank Wow, this is a gem. I feel like I can really listen to this like many more times. But the whole introduction. And also, I want to mention this event was made by the ICAP grant, New England Intercultural Art Project Grant. So, thanks so much for the support, and then that's it for today. Thank you so much for the time.